This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And this show is really about real money. It's really about real money. It's about gold. And gold is one of my favorite subjects. You know, it's like... um, 1964, I started collecting silver because I noticed there was a copper tinge around dimes and quarters. And it's called Gresham's Law. Gresham's Law states was when, you know, when phony money enters the system, real money goes into hiding. So in 1964, I was like 16 or 17 years old. And I saw this copper tinge around this dime. And I said, what the hell's going on? So the more I found out about it, so I, I was a kid, you know, living in Hawaii, I take a dollar or something and I get, you know, some roll of dimes and stuff like this. And I go through the dimes and I take out all the ones with the copper tinge and give it back to the bank and keep the real cop, real silver, the dimes and all that. <clears throat> and uh, so pretty soon by the time I left for school, a couple of years later, I had a bag full of real silver. And I didn't know that was Gresham's law. I was in- intuitively tuned in to real. And then in 1971, August 15th, President Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Of course, I didn't hear about it because he is tricky dick. And he announced it during the television program Bonanza. And I was in uh, Camp Pendleton, uh, California, getting ready to go to Vietnam. So I kind of missed that whole program on TV show Bonanza. But I was flying in Vietnam when I realized that I didn't know anything about gold. And so I flew behind enemy lines and looked for a gold mine. And I walked up to this little Vietnamese woman who was selling gold at a gold mine in Vietnam. One problem was it was behind enemy lines now because we were losing our war, got our asses kicked. So I asked her, uh, you know, and I didn't know what gold looks like because in 1972, it was illegal for Americans to own gold. And I thought that was really strange. So I was, my education was on the fly, that's what I'm trying to say. So I tried to negotiate this Vietnamese woman, the cute little thing, his bright red teeth, because they chew beetle nuts. And uh, gold used to be 35 an ounce, and it was now floating around 50. So I thought maybe because I'm behind enemy lines, I have greenback, I have dollars. I was in a negotiating position and she looked at me and I don't think she went to Harvard or anything, but she just looked at me and she's laughed at my partner and I'm my co-pilot and she goes, spot. I said, what is spot? And I was being educated. And what I found out a few days later, that spot means that's the price of gold all over the world. I mean, price has a uniform, gold has a uniform price, which means it's real money. Then I realized that's God's money. You know, if I get the atomic number and silver as an atomic number, the U.S. dollar doesn't. So I became very, very suspicious of the U.S. dollar. So our aircraft carrier group was a flying alpha carrier and went went to Hong Kong. And I went looking for gold. I didn't know what it looked like. And finally, I found a South African Krugerrand. And I bought it, and then I found out I had to smuggle it into the U.S. like a criminal, you know, because it was illegal since 1933, I believe, to own gold. And I thought, this is really strange, really strange. So I come back from the war, and thank God around 1974 or 75, I think it was Joel Ford made gold legal for Americans to own. And I thought, God, this is really quite fascinating. And then I started looking at the dollar, then inflation hit and all this. I remember going, I think in the 70s and 80s now, I'd go into the restaurants and they would actually have to change the restaurant price every day. So let's say I go to my favorite Chinese restaurant, you know, chow mein, the day before it was a dollar, today it was now a dollar 50. And this whole, you know, real life events got me to become a gold and silver bug. So ever since then, I don't save US dollars. You know, people say save money. I refuse to. You know, I save gold and silver, which are God's money. And it's 
God's money has been here since the earth was formed. So I'm very happy to uh, bring to the show today E.B. Tucker. He's written a fantastic book. It's called Why Gold? Why Now? And the reason I say it's a fantastic book is what the book does. It summarizes gold. Why it is God's money. <clears throat> Why it's more important today than ever before, especially with silver, gold, and now Bitcoin. And so... Um, I also started two, a gold mine in China. They took that. And I started a silver mine in South America. I still have that one. So I've been a gold and silver nut for a long time. So if you, when I read Why Money, Why Gold, Why Now? I said, this is the perfect book for somebody who really wants to find out how you're being screwed. I mean, now how, what's real and what's fake? And the US dollar is as fake as it comes. So with that, E.B. Tucker, Congratulations on a great book. I understand you wrote it in like 30 days or 20 days. 23 it, days. Yeah, it's extremely well written. I mean, simple, clear, to the point, no fluff. So thank you very much. So what is your background? What 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 gets you interested in gold? Well, it's it's in the book I, I talk about how I first got interested at three hundred dollars an ounce. I remember saying to my father, I think I'll get an ounce of gold. And he's like, why would you want that? It's you, what are you going to do? Buy groceries with that? I mean, it's, it's, it's functionally irrelevant. No, 2000, was, right? 2000. Yeah. Right. And so I really thought about it and I, and I did not buy it. And then about two years later, a friend was buying Kruger and I, and I, similar to you, you know, I held the Kruger and I, it was mesmerizing. And I saw the price going from 400, 450, 500. And I thought, why is this happening? And you talk about silver. This is a, a silver note. Remember the right. dollars you said, yeah be exchangeable for an ounce of silver. And they also had a gold note. You know, this was $20 for an ounce of gold. And so it's nothing has happened to gold over the years. It's only the money. And, and the subtitle of the book is The War Against Your Wealth and How to Win It. Right. And it, the only regret I have about the book, Robert, is I should have called the book The War Against Your Wealth because people have all these misconceptions about gold. Because in the media, they talk negatively about gold because gold needs to stay down in order to keep faith in the dollar high. So if you question the dollar, you'll say, why am I doing any of these things? I mean, you wrote an incredible book that impacted me in the 90s, which is when I was starting in my career. I'm not quite as young as I look. And I wonder if you wrote that book today, maybe poor dad would be the smart one because the Fed is trying to get you to, to do things that go against some of the things that you and I were fond of in the 90s, right? There's not a lot of point in saving if you get no interest and you lose 5% a year to inflation. I mean, there's, you start looking at the system that we live in and the war is against your wealth. And that's what we want people to see. Right. And uh, they can always learn more. So I really would recommend people getting uh, your book, Why Goal Right Now. And it really is a war against your wealth. And then, you know, you got to know I, what to do. You got to know how to win this war, right? I mean, we're not just in a Vietnam quagmire, right? We want to actually win this. And, and what we want to show people is, is that if you see what's happening, you can get ahead of this. You right. can see where this is going. And, and the best thing right now is, you know, the way this war between Bitcoin, you know, we have, we have Peter Schiff on one side and Max Kaiser on the other side for Bitcoin. It's a food fight. And right. so it's, it's silver, gold, and you know, I, I, I shifted to Bitcoin. I, I still bought as much gold as, I mean, I'm still buying gold. I bought some the other day because this guy had uh, some 10 ounce bars where you know, you know, kilos come in and they're hard to get. I mean, it's really hard to get. That's right. And it's getting hard. I couldn't even buy silver the other day. I mean, this is 2021. Well, what does that but tell you? Supplies are gone. <clears throat> That's right. And, and that's and, and so, plus, and plus they're suppressing people, the prices. They're people don't know this. The prices. Yeah, they don't, they don't understand how this works, Robert. So imagine if you go to McDonald's and there's a dollar menu and they say you can get this item for a dollar. You order the item and they say it'll be three fifty. dollars Wait a minute. I thought it was a dollar. Yeah, that's right. That's the price. But if you want one, it's three fifty. dollars That's how it works with gold. The price is $1,800. Oh, I'd like to have an ounce. Okay, it'll be $2,000. Well, wait a minute. I, I don't understand. And you got to wait two months for it. So why is the price 1800 Well, that's just the price because we're able to financially engineer the futures market to keep the price low. But if you actually want an ounce, it's much more. And then there was this huge war between, you know, Robin Hood, Reddit against uh, GameStop. And the little guys kind of won, but they got their asses kicked. 
They tried it with silver and they couldn't do it because that's real money. Silver and gold are God's money. They couldn't, they couldn't mess with the market because the big producers out of the, the comics and, you know, Tesla, Apple, Toshiba, Microsoft, all these guys who use silver kept the price suppressed. Now, well, well, for specifics, just to back you up so you don't sound like a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist. They traded 1.7 times the annual supply of silver in one day in order to keep the price down. You know, and so you idiots out there saving U.S. dollars or pesos or yen or euro, get E.B. Tucker's book, Why Go, Why Now? Because you're getting screwed. I mean, like, you know, like when, when people argue about goals over Bitcoin, now you just quote, you know, Yogi Berra. When you come to the fork in the road, take all three. You know, I, I have yeah. all three. And right now I'm high on silver because it's the most suppressed. It's 50% below its all time high yet. That's how That's right. they've manipulated the market. And what I liked about your book, you, you explain how it's manipulated. So can you give a quick scenario of how they keep the price manipulated? When you see the price of silver trade, like on this Bloomberg screen behind me, you're not actually seeing the physical price of silver. You're seeing a contract for future silver delivery, which will never happen. It will be settled in dollars. And so the guys in New York are able to sell an unlimited amount of those contracts into the market and settle those in dollars. It's called the futures market. Now, you don't see this with copper, which is at an all-time high. It's, it's been running all year because we're experiencing big inflation. You don't see this with lumber. Have you bought a two by four recently? I have. The price is <laughs> double. So, so all of the things that we buy that we need are going up in price, but the metals are different because, because it's in the government's best interest to keep the price down. And so you create financial products called futures that you're able to unload into the market to keep the price down. And that's, that's creating a difference between the gold price and other commodities. It distracts people. Now, Bitcoin is, to your point, is great, but Bitcoin is not digital gold because gold is not physical Bitcoin. These two things are not interchangeable. They're very different. So people ask all the time, should I buy one or the other? It's not like that. That's, that's, that's not the case. You know, it, 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 these are two very different things and they should be looked at differently. We talk in the book, as you know, in part three about how Bitcoin was created. And we, we have a theory behind who might have created it, which I don't think many people you know, go into and they, they'll see that in the book. But this is a very different asset. This is not the same thing as gold. That's correct. The most important thing is you want to know the differences between silver and gold and gold, silver and Bitcoin. And you can make a more logical decision. And then, you know, I, I caught hell the other day. So how can you buy Bitcoin at $50,000? I said, I didn't buy it at 50000 And this is my point to everybody right now is that silver and gold, the prices are held down now. Right. And if you're watching Bitcoin, but the real action is going to take place. And I could be wrong, but I think it's silver than gold. That's right. It's so happening it's right so, now. You it's can, so you can manipulated. See it. I have a huge trade on this, by the way. You can see it right now happening. It's like a beach ball that you've pulled down under the water, 10 feet under the water. And when you let it go, it's going to go flying, not just to the surface, but way up in the air and out of the pool. That's, that's what silver looks like. But people need to understand something, Robert. You don't buy gold to make a profit. Right. Gold is not a trade. It's wealth. It's real money. There are other things that we can talk about that you buy to make a profit. But gold is about financial security. It's about insurance. It's, an ins it's a fire insurance policy. You don't buy fire insurance to make money unless you're a criminal. But but you buy fire insurance so that you can protect what you have and you can build from there. If you lose your foundation, you're in big trouble. Yeah. And, and so there's differences between silver, gold, and Bitcoin, and they're all significant differences. And, you know, it's, if I told you today you could buy Bitcoin at $5, would you say, I'll think about it? But that's what we're saying is happening with silver and gold right now because it's manipulated. Anything you want to say well, about all you have to all you have to do is buy an ounce of gold. You'll see. You know, by the when you call the dealer, they say, "I'm sorry, it'll be the summertime before you can get it. It'll be two grand." That's that tells you all you need right. to know. So it's kind of like you go to get a Mercedes, and it should be a hundred thousand, and it's seventy. Are you upset? No, you're thrilled. 
But for some reason, when you see gold in that condition, you say, I don't know if I trust that. People get discouraged when they see low prices in gold, but, <laughs> but, but it should be the opposite. You, when you see an asset and you understand and you've read my book and you know how this works, you should be thrilled to see the gold price held down. And that's, that's, an op- that's the government finally doing something for you that's helpful. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, so, so that's how people should look at it once they can see the full picture. But it's even worse than that is because I took a friend of mine down to Argentina because this guy is, you know, highly educated, very successful and all this, but he is old school. And I took him to Argentina to meet my friend who was an engineer, a civil, I mean, electrical engineer in Argentina. He had a, he had a electrical engineering firm. He said he, he saved U.S. dollars. He had a million U.S. dollars in the bank in Argentina. And then one day the bank told them, they said that we took your, we took your money. And they said, oh, don't worry. We'll give you a million in Argentine peso or whatever they trade in. Yep, peso. That's right. And, and so I took my, my – so I, I, and he said, do you have any advice? He says, if I had plata or oro, you know, which is gold or silver, yep. and I yep. had outside the country, I would be okay. But because I had everything inside the banking system of Argentina and worst of all in U.S. dollars and they exchange it for pesos, I'm trapped. I can't get out of this country because the economy collapsed. So I, I looked at my friend. He goes, God, this is good. I'm glad you saw this. You know, that was five years ago. Yep. You no, I was I was there and uh, with Christina was running the, the yes. country oh, she's and wonderful. I was there. And, and, and this this adds to what you're saying is that when I when I used a credit card to pay for the hotel, it was an eight to one exchange rate. But my friend showed me a little store around the corner where it was 12 to one. But then my other friend had a guy that would bring the pesos on a moped at 16 to one. So you had the blue market and the black market. And so you had to you had to break the law to get the proper exchange rate. I mean, then it went up to something like 80 to one after she left and they got got rid of that. But what people don't understand is, is that the government's in charge of these things. And so you want something that's outside of the system. People say, well, Bitcoin's outside of the system. OK, maybe. But you have to be connected to a digital network in order to transact. So it's actually quite easy to restrict and control and tax the Bitcoin transactions. Whereas when you hold an ounce of gold, you're holding that money that you're talking about, that wealth in the palm of your hand. And there's no way to track or trace that. You can melt it down. You can make a belt buckle or a necklace or gold teeth out of it, whatever you want. And no one can ever trace where that comes from. Now that matters when you have turmoil. So you, so it doesn't matter when things are smooth and easy, but things are not smooth and easy right now. Well, that's why I'm going back to my friend five years ago. And the other, and so I just talked to him and said, how much silver did you buy? He goes, I didn't buy any. He says, well, I don't understand it. So that's why I suggest people read your book, Why Gold Right Now, because then you can make a better distinction between silver, gold, and Bitcoin. They're all different. They have strengths and they have weaknesses. Anything else you want to say about that? That's what you need to understand. Oh, plus, get some money out of this country. <laughs> you know, if you can. Hard. Yeah, if you can. you can. That's right. It's becoming increasingly difficult to, to get another citizenship or to have a bank account overseas. The walls are closing in. And so that's right. People have got to understand that gold is not some speculative thing. You know, yeah. everybody's hooked on 100% returns every day in the market and reading Reddit blogs and you know, trading stocks all, all the time. It's not like this. We're talking about your wealth. You're wealthy. If you go to work every day, you have wealth. You're earning wealth to have a better life. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. There's a lot to understand on this subject because, like I say, gold and silver is God's money. Bitcoin and crypto is people's money. It's outside the system. That's right. And, and you can do it legally. And I'm, I'm laughing right now because Yellen and Janet Yellen and Powell are on attack against Bitcoin. And, and the, uh, Yellen says it's not, it's not efficient. I said, well, is printing a trillion dollars efficient? And I'm going, are you kidding me? And Powell is now making a warning, creating a warning against Bitcoin. So they're scared right now because the system is collapsing. Well, so they, they, know, they, know what's best, they know what's best for us, Robert. Always, right? I'm from the government here to help you. So we come back, we've been going more into 
Why Gold? Why Now? with E.B. Tucker. And I, I really recommend this book because he keeps it simple. He is He covers the entire spectrum. And if you want a quick understanding about what real money is, that's why Why Gold? Why Now? is the, why now is the most important book you can read at this time. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Day Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today we're talking about real money. We're talking about gold, which is God's money, and silver, which is God's money, and Bitcoin, which is people's money. It's a very important subject because we're talking about money. If you're saving the US dollar, you're an idiot. If you're saving dollars, you're a bigger idiot. So our, uh, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. And please leave a review when we listen. All of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com because we don't recommend anything. We're not saying buy gold, silver, or Bitcoin. We're an education company. And so if you need to learn more about gold, silver, especially gold right now, which is God's money, Go to Rich Dad Radio, listen to this again, you'll learn twice as much. But most importantly, if you have a friend, family, or business associate who's an idiot, have them listen to this program and discuss it because that's how you'll learn even more. Like I said, I, I go to Argentina with my friend five years ago and he still hasn't done a damn thing. He still has about half a million in cash in the bank and they're printing trillions of dollars. Are you nuts? Well, you got to save money. You've got to save money. I said, why would you save it when they're printing it? So our guest today is E.B. Tucker. His book is Why Goal Right Now. I would say is the primer, is the basic. It's the big picture on what is real money. So please get it. Please educate yourself and start taking evasive action right now because the dollar is going down. So EB, what else would you like to talk about on this subject of what, what warning do you have for people? Because that friend of mine still hasn't done a damn thing. He's still saving well, the, dollars. The, the thing people need to understand is, is that this is all a well-orchestrated plan. Right. So what we say in part three of the book is we lay these things out. And I wrote this book during the pandemic lockdown because I had so many people calling me and saying, what's going on? What's coming next? What do we do? And to me, it looked very simple. I said, look, the, the Fed has got to engineer inflation so that the system, the debt in the system, 280 trillion can continue growing. That's very important because if it doesn't, everything collapses and you can't allow that. We know that you can't allow that. So we shut everything down. We're able to then begin rebuilding and have demand come back because you have half the capacity in restaurants. I mean, think about it. You shut everything down and now we're seeing it. I talked about universal basic income. They're going to pay people not to work. That's happening. Well, the writing's on the wall. So what do you do about it? Okay, you got to understand what comes next so that you can protect yourself and profit. And gold has gone from 1500 to 1800 I think it's going to go much higher. And it's good to have gold to protect your wealth. But let's get in front of that and buy something that can allow you to make money off of this. I mean, remember, if somebody told you 10 years ago, electric vehicles are going to be big. Okay, that's great. That's great to know. But what do you do about it? Right? There were things you could do about it to get in front of that trend, which now it's, it's all happening. So how do you play a higher gold price? I like royalties. I mean, I talk in the book about the royalty company that I helped found, why I helped found it, and how you can buy stock in that. Now, just like you, we're not recommending people do anything. But I said, you're at the end of this book, you've invested your time, I'm going to tell you what I've done with my personal life savings so that I can be ready for what's coming. So far, it's been working out very well. I think it'll continue to, but a royalty is like what you would expect the queen to have. It's 1% of everything that comes out of the ground without doing any work. I mean, you don't see the queen with, with dirty fingernails. You know, she's not down there running the bulldozer. I mean, she's taking 1% off of whatever comes out of the ground on her land, and that's a royalty. So when gold moves higher to 2,500, sure, you made 30% on your gold. That's fine. But the royalty, you captured 30 years of future gold production and you captured all that price rise today and the returns can be dramatic. Right. So royalty is like rent. You know, like the reason Basically. I own apartment houses is every month we collect the rent. And so that's explain that to me, because as, as when I read your book, I realized I was that's that, that's a Franco, Nevada and all that. that that's where they that's make right. their money on royalties. That's right. 
Franco and, Nevada, in the back of a newspaper in the 80s, they, they found a royalty for $2 million on an area in Nevada. They bought it, and about a year later, a uh, company discovered gold there. It's produced about 45 million ounces of gold, and they've taken a percentage of that. Uh, you know, that $2 million investment's paid out over a billion. But it's better than that, Robert, because imagine you're part, you, let's say you buy 100 apartments, and they get $1,000 a month each when you buy them, and you're excited about that. But what happens is rents start to go up. And so rents are going up at about 5 or 10% a year. So now you get 1,100, now you get 1,200. But even better, you look out five years and the market says, wait a minute, the rent's gonna be 1,500 in five years. So what is that apartment complex worth? I mean, you paid 10 million for it. It's probably worth 25 because the future, the future value of that rent today is dramatic. And so Franco Nevada is a huge company. It has about 25 employees and, and it has about a billion in market cap per employee, which is a staggering number. I mean, the, you know, you don't want many employees these days. So it doesn't take a lot to run a royalty company. But what I do is I tell that story of how they did that, exactly how they did it. I mean, I'm friends with guys on the board there. You know, I, I've met the CEO, all the, all the directors, like we patterned our company after that because, you know, we're doing exactly the same thing. So what is the name of your royalty company? Again, we don't endorse anybody. We're purely education, but I'm interested. It's Metalla. Because, what's Metalla called? Metalla Royalty. Metalla Royalty. I have, I have, they sent me a hat to, to celebrate. The stock was up 120% last year. And, uh, and that's just a factor of capturing the future value of higher gold prices today using royalties. So, so what's interesting about Metalla is you can buy it on the New York Stock Exchange, MTA, or the Canadian Stock Exchange, MTA. You can do all the research you want. You can, you can see the company's presentation. This is not an esoteric like idea. You know, this is, this is 63 royalties that we've acquired starting in 2016. As the gold price has gone up, we've bought these royalties and we, we hope to buy more of them. And as the gold price goes higher, this is a vehicle for us to capture the profits today for future higher gold price. Like we were saying, you have coins, that's great. I mean, you're not buying the coins to make 20%. You know, but when the gold price goes up 20%, the price of the royalty rises dramatically. So again, we're not endorsing it, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested simply because I, you know, I got so much gold and silver, it's a pain in the ass to store. I just don't trust my government. That's, the, that's you know, I don't, I don't trust Janet Yellen, the Secretary of Treasury, because she was head of the Fed. I don't trust, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs. They're the bouncing bankers going all over the world right now. And right. You know, and they're all manipulating paper money. And you guys out there who are saving paper, think about it this way. They're printing it faster than you'll ever earn it. And, and um, you know, Biden's talking about they're going to tax people over 400,000. Well, tax is an inflation. Printing money is inflation. So we, we have inflation on the way. So, E.B., what do you see about this thing called inflation? Because it's not just prices of something going up. It just simply means life is going to get more expensive. This is designed to trick you, Robert. So what we're going to do is let's say that the 10-year Treasury yield goes to 2%. And people say, wow, 2%, that's a lot higher than it was 10 years ago. So you put 100 grand into a Treasuries at 2%, you get 2,000 a year in interest. Now, remember in the 90s, you could have gotten uh, you could have gotten seven thousand a year in interest. Remember those days when you had a seven percent? Okay, now you're going to get. 2%. I remember fifteen percent. That's how well, old that, I that, that was. That was the eighty two. You know, so yeah. so I was alive then. However, I was not active in the treasury market. But <laughs> but but what happens is you're going to see two percent. Okay, and then you you say, well, that's not too bad. But the problem is is that you're going to have hidden inflation that's going to not only take that two percent, but it's going to take another two percent. And you're going to pay tax on the 2%. Do you see how this is good for the government? Because it allows them to generate higher tax revenue, disguise inflation, nominal growth will, will show up. And if you don't read my book and you don't listen to this show and you don't exercise your thinking mind, by the time you figure this out, it's too late. Because you saved up a pile of money and it's worth about a quarter of what you thought it was going to be worth. And you're going to be the guy that is 65 years old that's got to go find a part-time job. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do, but nobody in their right mind can tell me that they want to enjoy their late 60s working somewhere like the Home Depot. 
That's well, not uh, what you want to be doing. Let me, let me tell you a funny story because I've been telling this one guy for years also, buy silver. But, I was, but he, he saves money. And I said, just buy some silver. He has refused. But now, you know what he's stockpiling, speaking at Home Depot, he's stockpiling two by fours because he sees the price of lumber going up. Going, That's right. Going, That's right. It's you dramatic. You could have, the price of lumber is dramatically higher. A, you could have bought a silver eagle for 25 bucks, but you got two by fours stacked in your garage. He says, yeah, but two by fours are going up in price. I'm going, yeah. oh my God, how can, how, how silly can you be? Well, you can why, also why? use them, use them to burn for heat as well. But <laughs> see, you got to look at, you got to look at copper, uh, uh, corn, soybeans, sugar. Now people say, oh, this is above my pay grade. No, it's not. Yeah. Go on, go on Google and just type it in and say price of commodities and look at the charts. Every single one of them is higher. There was a couple of more things I want to talk about is, you know, I like your idea of royalties and metallia. Is, how do you spell that? Metalla. M-E- it's a Latin word. It's a Latin word for gold, for, for precious metal. And the, the symbol of the stock is MTA, Michael Tango Alpha, MTA on every exchange. There was an old song about the, the Massachusetts Transit Authority by the King's. There you Street. go. But I think, anyway, I, um, I hope I hope we fare better than the Massachusetts uh, Transit Authority, Robert. Yeah. And, and the big dig. Oh, God. Yeah, almighty. Right. I mean, every time the government spends your money, it's yeah. just, just worse. It, you cannot the, do the work. track record. The track record is not good. No. <laughs> and now and now Biden's going to start infrastructure products. You know how much graft and corruption that's going to create. It's Maybe it'll be, be different. Maybe it'll be different this time. Oh, no, I am, yeah. I am absolutely. <laughs> and, and Hunter Biden will be the bag. I mean, the uh, liaison. You okay. know what I mean? These guys are so corrupt. I'm not saying it's them. I'm saying it's human nature. That's right. And, you know, if, exactly you, right. if you could siphon off a couple of million dollars with a government contract, you probably would. And that's yeah. what Trump. I mean, it's, uh, you, you, that, that, that's, that's right. We don't want to have a, a, an ideological fight with what we no. see happening. What, no. what we want to do is figure out how to take care of ourselves and right. not expect people to be different. But the most important thing is you want to take control of what's called money. So if you have gold and silver and you have Bitcoin and you have Metallia and you have this, you, you're back in control of your money. And, I, you know, like Michael Saylor, a guy who just, I think, I don't know how much he dumped into Bitcoin, but he says the dollar is like a melting ice cube. And I would say that's a fairly accurate visual description. And like Janet Yellen says, you know, Bitcoin is inefficient. I said, printing a trillion dollars is not inefficient. And but, but, but eventually the government's going to have their own crypto. So we talk about this in the book. They're right. going to have a Fed coin, and that's going to be how you transact dollars. So Yellen's right. Bitcoin is not efficient enough to be the, tr- the currency mechanism for the Fed. But the Fed can create Fed coin, which would be a closed loop blockchain. And then people have a Fed coin wallet. And so when we stimulate the economy, I give you some Fed coin. But I say, Robert, you've spent too much on leisure. So you could only spend these Fed coin on food and shelter right now. And, and so people need to understand what that's going to look like. Right. Okay. So how can you get in front of that? We're, we talk about that in the book. You need to see this coming. Well, it's how do you spell Marxism? You know, that's what it's, it is. It's, 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 it's a better marketed version of it. Right. So yeah. we're going to call We're going to use dis- words to, to, to disguise it. And, and, but, but if you see it coming, you can, you can take evasive action. Right. And then, you know, just don't buy two by fours and stack it in your garage because the price of two by fours is going up. I can't believe it's so simple. And like the reason I like gold, silver, Bitcoin, there are, that's called liquidity. You know, there's a market for it every day of the year. That's what spot means. There's a market for it. So if I need to get out, I can get out. And I was just talking to this young guy. He's uh, he works at a hospital. He says, "Oh, I'm saving my money to buy a house in real estate." I said, "What do you think?" And I said, "Good luck," because you know, as you know, real estate is in a bubble, and <laughs> they don't know anything. They really no. don't know anything. I no. said, "Why don't you just you know buy a gold sh- uh, gold stock or your your uh, uh, royalty stock. I don't understand that stuff. 
but because I've started my own gold company and all this in China, and I, the Chinese people are great, but the Chinese government isn't. They'll take anything. They'll steal everything, including our IP. So you've, the whole point that EB is talking about is take control of your money. Is that correct? Correct. Robert, with a royalty company, we get around your problem in China because with 63 royalties, you buy them in different countries. Uh, there's I, I, no possible, yeah, there's no way you're going to lose all of them. See, to your point, if you, if you have your mining company stuck in the, inside of a regime that goes negative, right. you're in big trouble. It's your only asset. But if you've got one in China and four in uh, Brazil and six in Mexico and you got them spread all over the world, some in Nevada and, and all over America, all these things, what right. happens is you diversify yourself. And also, you're not doing any digging. So if there's a mine collapse, you know, you, you say, okay, well, that's, that's the mining company needs to fix that. And so you get out of the operation side of the business, you, you, you lose the governmental risk, and you play that upside in gold. And that's what you're talking about. It's one thing to protect. If you buy a bunch of your friend with the lumber, okay, maybe he could build a nice tree house and climb up in it and wait out the storm, all right? But if you buy a bunch of gold, you're not going to come out ahead. What's going to happen is you're not going to get washed away. Right. Now that, that defense is, is a good defense is, is pretty important, right? But what we want to do is play defense enough and then play some offense because we're seeing this thing go and we want to take advantage of it. Right. That's, that's the whole thing. People, in, once they get their thinking mind turned on, it's really easy to see this. I wrote this book so that people in my family that have no financial expertise could stop calling me and asking me questions. That's why we wrote the book. So that it's, it's a roadmap for the person that's working every single day to earn a paycheck because they want a better life, but thinks they can't understand money. And it's a well-written book. It's simple. It covers all the points and it's very um, comprehensive yet concise. So congratulations on, on writing a great book. I highly recommend it to anybody out there. And don't be like my friend who's talking two by fours in his garage. So <laughs> E.B. Tucker, thank you very much for being part of Rich Dad Radio. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about what is real money, what is fake money. I want to thank E.B. Tucker and his fantastic book, Why Goal Right Now. The reason I love his book is because it's comprehensive. It covers and it's simple. It's easy to understand, easy to read. So it's perfect for me. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. And please leave us a review. And all of our programs are archived there at richdadradio.com because we don't recommend, you know, like he, he talked about his company, Metallia, call sign MTA. We're not saying buy it. We're just saying go check it out, look at it, understand royalties. I, don't, I didn't understand royalties until a few years ago. I was stupid enough to start my own gold mine, my own silver mine, which I'll never do again. Because people say, well, why, did, why won't you do this? Because owning gold is cheaper than starting a gold mine. You have no idea. What he was talking about there is called, is called country risk. When you, most gold mines and silver mines are in hostile countries. They don't like us. And they can take your gold mine in a flash. And that's what the Chinese did. So China is today one of the biggest producers of gold, thanks to my gold mine. You know, God bless them. I'm not blaming the Chinese people, but it's your government. And when they're they're here to help you, you're in trouble. So listen to our podcast at richdadradio.com, your friends, family, and business associates who are stacking two by fours in their garage. I guess two by fours are better than stacking dollars. And you know, who knows? They might be right. But anyway, with that, please remember, we're just an education company. We make no recommendations. So Sarah, what'd you think? So. I felt like we, I learned a whole bunch of new things um, in this show. I had never heard of royalties Me before. Um, and so definitely something that, you know, worth in, looking into because it's just another thing in our repertoire to, to understand. Well, apparently with Franco Nevada, you know, I kept, I kept hearing about it, but my mind was closed because I didn't understand it. Yeah. And he says, I only got 50 employees, a multi-billion dollar company. That sounds wonderful to me. <laughs> <laughs> and the sign of the times. He well, said, no, nobody anyway, wants employees I, these I, days. I, after starting a gold mine, yeah. you have no idea how painful that is. Well, I think to his last point that he made, that's a lot of, think of all the work and time and energy <sighs> that goes into just, you know, doing the research before you even start it. So I thought it was very interesting, interesting topic to bring up. Um, but my favorite quote from the show is, um, you're not going to come out ahead with gold, but you're not going to get washed away. And I thought that was like, 
put, you know, put the cherry on top of the discussion. Well, think of this. I bought my first uh, Krug around in 1972. It was six months after Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So I paid 50 bucks for it. So 50 bucks then was a lot of money, but today that same Krug around is worth 2000. Mm -hmm. And what is 50 bucks worth now? Not much. Yeah. And that's exactly what he's talking about. And the reason I like silver, it's still approximately 50% below its all time high. And so when people say, you're still buying Bitcoin. I said, no, at 50,000, I already made my money. I'm in the money. Right. I'm in the money. I'm not gonna get greedy. I bought a lot of it. I wish I bought it at a dollar, but I wasn't astute enough, but I bought it as early as I could. And I've made a lot of money, but I'm not gonna chase it. Yeah. And I think that was this point about a trade position versus a hold position. Right. You know, so I think that's an interesting concept that we haven't really talked about much on this show when we're talking about really gold isn't there to get rich. It's there to preserve your wealth. Yeah, not only that, you know, Kim and I are going to pass it on for hundreds of years. We're never right. going to spend it. Right. And that's long term. We, we take control of time. Wealth is controlling your time. So for a hundred years from now, Kim and I will still, you know, she might be around, but I definitely won't be around, but we'll still, our money will still be under our control yep. over time. And gold is God's money. It was here when the earth was formed, same as silver. And so it's just a matter of understanding that the US dollar is fake dollars. It's fake. Same as the Euro, the peso, the yen, and whatever they're spending to the Yuan. And I always remember what Lenin said, the best way to destroy capitalism is debauch the dollar or debauch the currency. And that's what Nixon did in 1971. And that's when in 1972, I started buying gold. I was buying silver in 1964. And that's why I'm a wealthy man. You know, I make a lot of cash, but I'm converting as fast as I can to gold and silver because I use debt as money You know, I borrow money. I don't recommend that either, but it's sure easier than working for it and debt is tax free. So those, that's real financial education and that's why, you know, God bless the financial planners, but I don't use them. Anyway, that's why you have the Rich Dad Radio Show. Take care and uh, get E.B. Tucker's book, uh, Why Gold, Why Now? Because it's about something very important and near and dear to us, your money. Thank you. <laughs>